And well, yeah, the, the title of the presentation is, uh, what, can you hear me correctly with um, this? We well, we'll hear you perfectly well. Okay, yes. perfect, perfect. Okay, the title of the presentation is uh, Regime Switching and Dynamic Games with Hyperbolic Discounting. And the, the motivation, well, this is a joint work with Jesus Marin. Uh, and the motivation of this uh, work is the fact that, um, the fact that uh, regime shifts are uh, very common or are common in many economic problems. For instance, when there is the possibility of implementing a new technology or when there's the option of introducing a new product or um, when we have to decide whether or not to join an international agreement, etc. Uh, the regime shifts can be the result of a shock that can be exogenous or endogenous. In the case of exogenous shocks, the switching time can be deterministic. For instance, when, when a new regulation is going to be applied and we know it in advance, or it can be a random variable, for instance, when an economy in Asia has to face some unexpected crisis. Uh, the regime shift uh, can also occur when a certain level of a state variable has been achieved. Think on oil deposit, such that below some level of the, of the deposit, okay, we need to change to a different technology if we want to continue the extraction and the exploitation of the resource. But also alternatively, the switching time can be a decision variable by decision makers, okay? can be a, a, a control of the the decision maker and this is the the, the the topic that we want to explore okay? uh, the case of endogenous since switching uh, when the the uh, decision maker has a uh, general time inconsistent preferences with this in, in mind uh, i will the online of the presentation uh, will be the following um let me skip this uh, I will first uh, survey some, some results on endogenous regime sheets with one decision maker and time inconsistent temporal preferences. Here I will, I will review uh, or I will mention results from a paper that we did uh, in the past year with Carlos, Carlos Magno, uh, and Jesus, Carlos Magno, Jesus Marina, and, and myself. It's a paper that was published in a special number of mathematics in a number was coordinated by Ekaterina Gromova. And um, also uh, in this part, I will, I will introduce a review a bit uh, of the, the setting of um, non-constant discounting, just in case someone in the, in the audience uh, is not used to, to this framework. Okay. And later uh, we will see um, Later, we will see in the case of endogenous regime sheets with several decision makers, the case, the case of differential or dynamic games. Okay. So uh, let's see with, with the first part. And uh, let's analyze the case of endogenous regime sheets with one decision maker and then inconsistent prefer uh, temporal preferences in continuous time. Uh, here, when we look to the literature, uh, uh, and initially with the standard discounting, uh, we find uh, previous works that analyze the problem of the regime switching, as they are the works by Tommy Yama and Amir. Uh, they both solve a finite horizon to state optimal control problem. And in particular, Tommy Yama analyzed the case of the optimal investment decision of a firm whose capital goods uh, face some delivery lack. Uh, this problem uh, with uh, the lack can be rewritten as a two-stage optimal control problem, was the problem that analyzed Tomiyama. And later, uh, Amir analyzed the case of a producer who considers switching from a primary to a secondary petroleum recovery process. Uh, later, uh, Macris extends this setting to the infinite time horizon case. Uh, the model analyzing Macris was the one of an open economy that interact with the rest of the world through the world market, uh, the world capital market, and has the option to release this capital, some capital controls uh, at T1. Okay? Uh, in doing so, uh, in, in changing the, the from regime from the previous regime, the regime from capital controls to the regime of free capital controls. 
the, the economy in course and some costs that is represented by omega, omega one. Uh, this will be the structure that we will follow when we generalize this with more general discount functions. Uh, so, um, let me, okay. Let me continue with some uh, papers that analyze the same situation, but now with uh, time inconsistent temporal preferences. In the discrete uh, time case, we find the, the paper by O'Donoghue and Rabin, doing now or later, they, they work with uh, beta delta preferences that analyze this, this uh, situation. Uh, there's the paper that I mentioned before, I have mentioned before, by Carlos uh, Magno, Jesus Marín, and Messer, where we analyze the problem uh, in continuous time, and was totally deterministic. And with, I, I will explain better what I mean here by partial, partially myopic agents. And also, there's a recent book on optimal control with time inconsistent preferences by Bior Capo and Mugorsi that has some chapters on optimal stopping. And also, there uh, we can find ideas on, on these topics. So uh, going back to, to the paper uh, by, by Carlos Jesus and the model that uh, we want to study in, in, in that occasion was the following. Uh, it's one agent that has the option to change from one regime one where uh, the agent is obtaining an instantaneous uh, profit of the given by capital F1, okay? It has the option to change a moment capital T to a second regime, a different regime. And in case that uh, he does do, uh, he will incur in this cost represented by omega. Uh, payoff uh, during the first regime, payoff during the second regime, and also the cost function are discounted, uh, general discount functions that can be different between each regime and also for the cost function. We also consider that uh, the dynamics at each regime can be different. Uh, and also uh, we can have a situation that uh, we have corner solutions in the sense that it could be optimal not to change at all so that this capital T uh, would be infinite or it would be optimal just to change just from the beginning of the model in this case, this capital T would be exactly a small t that is the initial time for this problem. Uh, while the, 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 the model is solved for these general discount functions, there uh, we illustrate with some uh, numerical examples the, the case of non constant discounting and the traditional discounting as the two uh, settings that we have been working more frequently uh, with. Uh, that represent an inconsistent uh, uh, temporal preferences. So before continuing with, with the resolution of the model, I will shortly uh, remind uh, um, what the settings uh, are and how we can manage and how we can compute the solutions when we work with this kind of uh, discount functions. Uh, in the case of, uh, uh, of non-constant discounting, uh, well, when we face a, a, a general problem, this we don't have any regime uh, sweeps at all, okay? We only have uh, a maximization problem, a dynamic uh, um, optimization problem from small t to capital T plus a final function. Um, since the, the original and seminal work by Samuelson, we, we, we have the discounted utility model by Samuelson, the way that we, we, we face this kind of problem was just to discount the future by using exponential discount functions with constant rates of time preference. However, uh, with, uh, in, the, in the last uh, decades of the past century, with all the um, explosion of behavioral economics, a lot of people start looking at how people really behave and try to see the, the, the the assumptions that were behind the discounted utility model by Samuelson were uh, really realistic. And they, find, uh, they found that, um, that uh, people, uh, especially individuals, when, when they look to the future, 
uh, they used to behave differently than the, uh, the standard or exponential discounters uh, show or predicts. And in particular, uh, what they find is that um, first, uh, in from a similar situation, we can um, we can behave differently uh, depending whether we are in the, in the short run or in the long run. This will lead to a problem of the inconsistency of the of our decisions. And secondly, uh, when we are in the short run, we are in the short run decisions. We are much more much more impatient. We are much more impatient. Uh, we want to capture these two features that this, this, the, the higher impatience for short run decisions and uh, different behavior in the short run and the, the long run. We can do this by generalizing the discount functions, for instance, by specifying something like this. Here we also have an exponential function. But now what we have is that the instantaneous rate of time preference here represented by this small r it is no longer constant. Uh, so uh, if we assume that uh, this is no longer a constant and it's not increasing, we can capture the, the idea of pressing bias preferences. And also uh, this instantaneous rate of time preference depends on the position of the uh, decision maker on a small team. With this, uh, we will see that uh, this, um, we will have a problem of time consistency. In, in order to see this, uh, this uh, why the problem of the inconsistency, well, uh, from a mathematical point of view, it's quite, uh, it's quite uh, easy or direct to see uh, this uh, because the problem that we have is that we lost the property that, uh, for, that we have for standard discounting. Uh, we are discounting or we have an, an exponential discount, uh, an exponential function, Something that we can do is just to split any discount uh, interval into several subintervals with uh, the quality of this expression. However, when we have a function of this kind, this equality does not uh, longer hold. Okay? Um, but uh, precisely this property is a property that is used uh, when, for instance, uh, we obtain the, the or we derive the um, expression from the hamilton jacob Yerman equation. So uh, just let me show this, this, this uh, part here. I think that let me see if this works because here I have the option to, to show you with my what word. Yes, yes. If yes, um, you remember the derivation of the hamilton jacobian equation. We start from the definition of the value function, and we say that the value function at some moment t uh, with um, some state t is equal to the maximum of this probably above this this way. Okay. This um, plus a final function here. So the next step that we do is just to split this, this um, time horizon from a small t to capital T into sub intervals. Okay, that is from small t to t plus epsilon. Only the idea I will finish very shortly. And then at this point, at this point, okay, we can take a common factor from this term, from this integral, and from this last term, the following.
Okay. And the question is that uh, with the common factor, the exponential of minus r times epsilon, okay, we can join this integral plus this and then obtain the value of function at the moment uh, t plus epsilon with the state corresponding to t plus epsilon. But in order to do this, and this is the way that we can relate the value of function at the moment and the value of function at the moment t plus epsilon, in order to do this, in order to do this, we need to apply this property that I have shown, I have mentioned before. That we can split the the the, the, the discount uh, interval in uh, two subintervals, this and this. Uh, but when we have uh, or we work with this kind of uh, okay, okay. when we work with this kind of uh, discount functions, we can no longer do this. So that this is the reason why why. Uh, the standard optimization techniques uh, fail in providing the inconsistent solution for, for this kind of models, okay? So uh, how we can solve these models? Well, uh, we can compute again uh, by applying the ideas from the net programming, the corresponding dynamic programming equation, um, and uh, the, the, the one that we obtain for the case of non-constant discounting is this one. Here, uh, we, if we compare this with a uh, standard or the usual hamilton jacobian equation, so I think the, the thing that we can see that is different is that the, the now it appears this capital K function inside here. For the rest, okay, the equation, the equation that we have now for our non-constant discounting problem is similar to the standard hamilton jacobian equation. However, the, when we look to the expression of this capital K function, and this is one, we can see that there's a, a increase, a higher increase in the difficulty when solving this dynamic programming equation. And the reason is that in this capital K function, we include a non-local term since this capital function includes the control, not only at moment T, like the standard hamilton jacobi hermann equation, but also for over all the instance from small T to capital T. If we apply from instance, or we try to solve this uh, dynamic programming equation, by the guessing method, the kind of equations that we obtain from here are integral differential equations. So then that in general is much more difficult to solve that, uh, that uh, the partial differential equations that we usually have. Um, however, the, the, it's true that there are uh, some particular specification of uh, discount functions for which it's possible to differentiate this expression with respect to time so we can simplify it a bit this setting and work with a system of two partial differential equations. One partial differential equation accounting for the value function of the problem and the other for the expression of the capital K function. Okay. Uh, the other uh, setting that we analyzed in the, in the paper was the, the, what we call the traditional discounting. Here, uh, we apply standard discounting you can see that here we have the exponential of minus delta time s minus t, but the, the, the characteristic of, of this setting is that the instantaneous rate of time preference that we apply for instantaneous payments and the final function is different, okay? And the motivation, well, is the following. The, the fact that we, or the temporal bias that we, we obtain from here by doing this is the following. For instance, if we rewrite this, this blue term from the final function in this way, okay, we can see that, uh, and we substitute in the, in the original expression, we can see that now we have a homogeneous uh, discounting by applying the, the delta uh, rate of time preference, both for the instantaneous payoff and for the final function, but now the corresponding final function it's all this, all this, not the original one, but also multiplied by this term. And for instance, for the case that rho is larger than delta, for the case that rho is larger than delta, what we have is that this term is increasing with a small t. This means that when this agent approaches the end of the planar horizon with this agent that is starts at t and approaches capital T, okay, these terms increase so the valuation, the, the real valuation of the final function increase, increase, okay, as we 
become closer and closer from, to capital T. Um, in order, how to motivate this setting for instance in a, in a, in a regime switch uh, problem? Well, in order to avoid the, the white board before, just let me go back here. Imagine that for the first regime, the period with capital control, we apply some delta uh, one uh, rate of, um, of uh, temporal preference. And here we have some kind of extra uncertainty after the street regime, so that we, we want to increase or apply a higher rate of time preference. So uh, if for all the payments or for this second regimes, we apply a higher, um, uh, apply a higher rate of time interest and we package all this uh, value for the second in a final function, the resulting structure that we will get will be similar to that of the uh, television or discounting. Uh, also for this uh, framework, for this kind of discounting, the, the standard uh, tools of the organization fail in providing time consistent solutions so in the corresponding dynamic programming equation to characterize time consistent solution is this one. Uh, here, the expression for the, 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 the capital K function is slightly different because the setting is different. In fact, it's easier to work with this than with uh, non-constant discounting, but it's this one. Even, and um, this is probably something uh, that is uh, my opinion, well, interesting is that even if one says, okay, uh, this is interesting if you work with in the field of behavioral economics, but for the kind of problems, uh, it's okay for me to assume full rationality to, to my decision, to my, my agents, to, to the, my decision makers. Uh, even in this case, when we have a um, cooperative solution uh, with asymmetric, but totally fully rational Issues we can uh, or situations of the former uh, kind can arise. So just let me motivate this very shortly. Imagine that we have a, um, we look for the correlative solution of a differential game we do with two agents, agent one and agent two. So we, we look for the sum of both the functional objectives, okay? and we allow for we look for possible asymmetries between the agents. It can be an asymmetry in the instantaneous payoff function and asymmetry in the rate of, um, of a temporal preference that uh, each agent is applying to, to discount and the corresponding uh, payoff functions. Okay. So uh, in case one and case two, that we assume that, um, for instance, the particular case that R1 is equal to R2, okay, uh, the, the aggregate uh, problem, the cooperative uh, problem collapsed in, in an standard optimal control problem, so there's no problem in computing the solution. However, if we assume that uh, the case that the payoff functions are equal, but the uh, discount functions are different, okay, what we have is that we can take common factor, the, the payoff functions, and then multiply by this theta function that has the following structure. But this linear combination between of two exponential corresponds to a function of an exponential of the non-constant discount type. So uh, uh, we want to face the correct solution for these two agents that they only differ in the, in the rate of time preference. Okay? For the coalition, this, the problem is one of the non-constant discount. And um, going back to the last case, when we have fully asymmetry, difference between the, the rate of time preference and difference between the instantaneous payoff function, okay? In the fully totally, um, totally different case, what we have is that um, we have this situation. Uh, here, I am just let me remember that uh, any any uh, dynamic optimization problem can be written in several ways with only an integral form. That is what we call the Lagrange problem. Uh, we can combine an integral form plus a final function. We call this the Bolsa problem. Or we can work with only a final function. Uh, we call this the Mayer problem. 
and we can transfer one uh, one problem uh, from one, one structure in, in in another one. Okay, so the, we can go from Lagrange to Bolsa, from Bolsa to Maya. So there's no problem. So imagine that we face this cooperative solution, and what we do is just to package the uh, the integral corresponding to the second agent in a final function. So what we have uh, is just a problem of the kind of iteration of this kind, because for the first agent, the discount uh, rate will be R1, for the second agent, the discount rate will be R2. In order to do this package, we have to introduce a new state variable, but the procedure, procedure is very simple. Okay? So the, um, my point is that even if we don't want to consider this kind of um, uh, discount functions that introduce some temporal bias in the preference. When we analyze a cooperative solution for differential games, okay, uh, if they are asymmetries within with, with, within the agents, okay, this kind of uh, situations also arise. So uh, the setting of um, general time preference, I think that it's wider that, that initially it can seem. Okay, so let's go back to the to the to the original problem, the one of uh, the switching, uh, the regime switching. Uh, here, we we remember that we extend the, the, paper, the structure of the Macri's um, paper just by generalizing the discount functions. We allow a discount function, a general discount function be one for the first regime, uh, different, a possible different discount function for the second regime being capital T the moment of the switch, if it is, and uh, omega will represent the cost of the transition from the regime one to regime two. So the procedure that we suggest in order to solve this problem is the following. We will first solve the problem from capital T to the end of the planet horizon. Okay? So we assume that capital T is the switching time and solve the problem with for only for this one. Okay, from this, we obtain the equilibrium rule. So what we can integrate the state equation, taking as boundary condition, a generic a value for the state value. And then we package this inside the instantaneous value of function and revaluate it here. Okay, revaluate it, taking and discounting at two moment small t up to the initial of the planet horizon, okay? So um, remember that we cannot split in general the discount function in, in several subintervals. So we cannot join the, the, or the here a new complete final function for this problem. But the only thing that we can do from this uh, first step is just to compute the optimal solution for this second, uh, from the second regime and then put inside here and reevaluate it, discount it again from the perspective of the original agent that it has multi. And then uh, we can multiply and divide um, this second integral and this uh, cost function by D1, okay? So, so in some way we can write, okay, this problem in this way. Like, a uh, um, uh, both a problem, in fact, is, is just the, we want to maximize the integral from the small t to capital T plus the one times this final function. Here, this would be a case of free terminal time problem. And also, and this is the big difference with a problem with a standard discounting, this final function depends, depends on the initial position of the decision maker, the small t, okay? So, uh, well, we solve this problem by using any of the uh, dynamic programming equations that we have seen before. If it's a problem with no constant discounting, the corresponding one. This is a problem of solution discounting with the corresponding one. But we need an extra condition in order to characterize the optimal capital T, the optimal switching point. At this point, um, we, we, we ask the following question. Is it possible to find some kind of switching time or characterization such that the conditions uh, were similar to the case for uh, constant discounting? 
And the, and the answer is affirmative if we introduce the, the concept of epsilon sophisticated. That is the following definition. And here, this is a, just a local definition that says that if capital T is the switch in time, or it's a switch in time, okay, it must happen that uh, locally would provide the higher value. So when you compare with possible switching times before this capital T, we get lower values. And we do the same with possible times after this capital T, we also get lower values. So that is like a local maximum. From this, we can identify all the switching times and I will, we will define the, 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 the real one, the one that we will follow with radiation as the uh, lower of this collection of, sw of switching times. Uh, this definition and this uh, approach has some uh, drawbacks that I will mention before, but when we look to the, the conditions that characterize this, this uh, behavior, we found that they are like this. Um, if you remember the, the, for the condition of the free terminal time problem, uh, for a standard discounting and final function, remember that is that's the Hamiltonian evaluated at the at capital T plus the time derivative of the final function with respect to this capital T time is equal to zero. And we compare with this, what we have is new is this term here and this term here. Yeah, well, this is the condition for interior solution. If you want to have a switch, a positive switch from regime one or regime two, and this is the case that where the, there's not a switch at all. So we directly enter, or, no, sorry, we enter directly in regime two. But uh, in the case that we have a, 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 regime, a positive regime one and positive regime two, okay, that the kind of is this. Uh, when we compare this with the standard uh, condition, what we can observe is that this new the, the, the new term uh, that appears is this one. However, when we compute this for, for instance, the case of no constant discounting, the only thing that we have here is the instantaneous rate of time preference times the final function. And this is, in fact, the condition that is similar to the standard case, but when we work with current value. Because one, one thing that, um, one uh, situation that we, uh, that we have when we work with, with this kind of time preference is that we always have to work with current values. So this, this condition, it looks, it's really, really identical to the standard one, except that it's defined in current value. Uh, some problems of the definition of the epsilon sophisticated agents. Um, well, if, 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 if there is any question, feel free to, to ask me, okay? Uh, some uh, questions. Um, the first one is that, for instance, in some way, epsilon sophisticated agents are uh, myopic in the sense that they only compare what is happening just an instant later, an instant before, uh, the, the characterization of the optimal uh, switching time. So they, they don't have a larger um, perspective of this. Because of this, uh, one open question that is that we have still to, to, to study is if we can um, be sure that our optimal switching time, okay, it's in the our switching time for our epsilon, sophistic, uh, epsilon sophisticated agent, it's also the switching time for a fully sophisticated agent. And by fully sophisticated agent, I mean that it could be the case that imagine that uh, I obtain as possible switching times, videos two, four, six. And by my definition, that is, uh, the, I will take a switching time, the lower one, I will uh, switch from regime one to regime two at moment two. But this does not mean that this is the best option. Maybe it could be better for the, the, the Asian have, um, having way to moment four or having way to moment six and get a higher value from the change from regime one to regime two. This is something that we cannot we cannot uh, know from this definition, okay? Um, next, um, 
I have uh, a couple of examples in order to illustrate how all this works. Uh, this one is, um, is inspired in, uh, in a paper by Vallon uh, that I will mention later. And it's the case of a resource extraction model uh, with a the option of um, a technology adoption by, by the extracting firm. Here uh, we have the, 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 our consumption of the resource that is uh, represented by you. Okay. Um, needs a, a technology that is represented by gamma. So that, um, let, me, let me repeat. Um, if I want to consume one unit of the resource, I have to extract gamma uh, minus one unit of the resource time, okay? So gamma, the larger the value of gamma, the less efficient is the technology. So here I have the option to, to, to change from a technology represented by gamma one, to a better one, gamma two, that is a lower value, okay? That obviously the value should be, or must be equal or greater or equal than one, okay? And if I do this, I will incur in a cost. We have different options to define the cost, but uh, we will assume, or we assume in our examples, that the cost will be proportional to the value function of the second regime. This means that in some way, we assume that the cost is paid in units of the resource that we have at the moment of the switch between regimes. Uh, then for, well, these are the, the particular um, um, values that we put for the parameters of the model. And for the discount function, we take a linear combination of exponentials. Here are this uh, representation of the instantaneous rate of time preference in the case of a standard discounting. Uh, the, the instantaneous rate is constant, so this is the blue line. But in the case of non-constant discounting, we can have these two situations, okay? Uh, the larger, okay, the, the initial um, instantaneous rate, the more uh, bias is this Asian to the, uh, to the person, okay? If we uh, uh, perform some numerical sensitivity analysis um, of the results obtained, we obtain that when we increase the short-term impatience by increasing the value of row two, okay? What we obtain is that um, the switching time becomes um, um, uh, um, more further, okay? Or put in other ways, it's, uh, it's, um, it's uh, not beneficial, it's not beneficial uh, an increase in short-term impression in order to uh, the, the introduction of the innovation, okay? So the higher my short-term impression is the lower the situation in terms of the introduction of the of the new technology. When I look to the sensibility analysis with respect to the, the improvement that I can obtain, remember that a lower value of gamma, it's a better situation. The better the case, the faster the switching time will be. Okay? And finally, if I look to the cost of the innovation that is represented here by my delta, when I increase the cost of the innovation, the, the, the this innovation will be introduced uh, later. Okay, so it's also uh, a larger cost is associated with that, or it's, it's a negative effect in terms of the introduction of the innovation. Yeah, another example that we have um, that we analyzed in that paper is the following. The, this is inspired in a, in a paper by Gesser. And it's the case of a firm and that uh, is producing and selling in a market a given product, uh, has the option to introduce a new product. Uh, the new product is, um, was uh, vertically and horizontally differentiated from the original one. And in the original paper, uh, in the second regime, after the introduction of the new product, both products were, uh, the, the, the firm produced both products. Uh, we, we take a simplified version of this, and we assume that if the film introduced the new product, okay, he stops uh, producing the first one. Uh, in any case, uh, we have here from the uh, profits from the, the first regime, we only 
when we sell the first product, this is the investment in capacity production. And here in capital T, we have the option to change to this new product with a larger market, this is the, the extent of the, the growth map. Uh, we change the, the regime, and, but uh, the, the, in order to do the change, we have to incur in this cost. This, this uh, state variable should be capital K, not X, but um, this is the cost function for the switch in the region, okay? So if we, we solve this problem, uh, we obtain uh, the similar uh, results than before. When we increase the short-term impatience, this is negative in terms of the, the introduction of innovation. Here, we will delay the introduction of the new product. If we improve the innovation, here is we increase the, the, we consider a larger market size. Okay, and this is beneficial. So the, the, the innovation of the new product will be introduced faster. And finally, if the cost of the innovation will increase, Okay, it's represented right here. And uh, this is also, we, it will be detrimental in terms of the introduction of the product. Okay, finally, we go to the case, and these are just uh, some, some pictures, looking at the evolution of the control and the state variables. But let's go to the second part, okay? That is the, the case when we have more than one decision uh, maker. So that the, the case of a, uh, dynamic or differential game. And here, uh, when we look to previous literature, what we found uh, um, working with a standard discounting of these models is, for instance, the, the, the paper by Long, Pierre, Tipa, and Puthor, when they introduced the concept of piecewise close to nice equilibrium. Uh, the, in fact, the model that they analyzed in this paper is really nice because they allow, the, they consider um, uh, uh, the, the possibility for a, the, uh, extracting film to introduce a new technology, a problem similar to the one that I have introduced before, uh, but they allow both um, to both players to do the transition to the new regime. Uh, however, there's, there's a pro problem in the, in the definition of a fully feedback uh, strategies in this setting. And for this, um, David and Gesser have analyzed a slightly simplified version of the original setting introduced by Lon et al. And uh, they consider that even they, they, are, they, they consider two agents, just one of the agents um, has the option to do the transition to the new regime. Uh, in this paper of the 2021, they first analyzed or they first set a strategy that was a mix between Markovian and open loop, was open loop with respect to the definition of the time of the, with respect to the switching time, but Markovian with respect to the competition inside a regime. And in this last paper, uh, they have uh, extend these concepts to uh, have a fully Markovian Nash equilibrium. At this moment, the results that we have is just an extension of this first concept to our setting with a non, non, non constant discounting of with time inconsistent uh, temporal preference, but our ob objective or goal is just to consider this fully Markovian Nash equilibrium with uh, this in time preference. But I hope that this will be something for near future. But uh, was, this is what I was mentioned, that the, the first approach in, uh, David and Gesser uh, analyzed um, is quite, uh, it can be directly extended to our setting, okay? And the second one, we think that it's possible, but it will be more complicated. Just to show how this works, uh, now uh, let me introduce this example. Here we have two agents, uh, agent one and agent two. Uh, only agent two has the option to introduce on the new technology. This new technology is represented by this gamma two two, it's gamma of the player two at second uh, uh, period or second regime. So the, uh, the, the, the introduction will only improve or we only benefit the second regime. Okay? 
Uh, also, we assume a cost function that is proportional to the benefits that we obtain in the, in the new regime. And for this, we can solve the problem working in the, well, as before, and we obtain the following. Just let me start by here, and then I will go back to, to the most interesting result from this part. Uh, here, uh, what we have is that when we look to the, the extension of the innovation, the better the innovation is the faster the introduction of the, of the, of the, of the change in the regime. Okay? So it's, it's more beneficial uh, to have a, a better innovation. That in other side is, is logical. The larger the cost of the innovation, this is detrimental, this is um, good for the introduction of the new uh, technology. But when we look to what happens when we increase the shortening patient, if you remember for the case of one decision maker, when we increase the, this, this short term impression, what we have is was negative effect in terms of the uh, speed of the introduction of the new technology. But here, what we obtain is, is the contrary effect. Okay? When we increase the, 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 the short term impression, what we have is that, in fact, we obtain a faster adoption of the new technology. And this is something curious, but what is happening is that in this situation of, again, we have a double effect. Um, we have the same effect than before when we, can, when we analyze the case with one decision maker. A higher short-term impression is detrimental for the introduction of the, of the innovation. However, uh, to have a less available amount of the resource, will faster, you know, will make uh, faster the introduction of the new technology. And here, uh, this reduction in the available resource is because of the competition, because of the alteration. Since now we are considering the case of again, okay, uh, the, 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 the agent that has the option to change the, the, the regime, now has the competition from the other agent, and this makes that uh, he wants to introduce the, the, the innovation faster than uh, this was not the case. And this effect dominates okay, the, the other one uh, associated to the increase in the short term impression. So um, I think that I, I stop here. And I don't know if I am probably sure. Uh, yes, you will have any question. Um,